Hi Sue, how are you doing? Good. Wednesday morning, week two of lockdown. We've done yep. 14 days now, haven't we? Well, this is a 14th day of lockdown in New Zealand. Absolutely. And today we are going to talk about the lovely topic of forgiveness. No, so, I, don't like it. I don't like that topic. Don't you? No, I think it's hard. It's, no, it's really good. It's really good. It's challenging. When you first learn about it for the first time, I actually think it's a really hard concept to get your head around. When you kind of kind of understand it, it's okay. But when you first try and grasp it, I think it's a pretty hard topic. It is a hard topic. And I'm going to come in straight away with a quote. We normally do the quotes later on, don't we? But I'm going to come into it because I think this really emphasizes forgiveness and why it's important. As I walked out the door towards the gate that would lead to my freedom, I knew if I didn't leave my bitterness and hatred behind, I'd still be in prison. And that was Nelson Mandela. Yeah, Nelson Mandela's amazing, isn't he? Because he also says, resentment is like drinking with poison and then hoping it will kill your enemies. And it's so true. And if there's anyone better to talk on the subject of forgiveness, it would have been Nelson Mandela, wouldn't it? He's got a lot yep. to speak on it. I know, and he came out of prison and he didn't hold on to that resentment. He, he lived his life when he came out, you know. He'd been incarcerated for so long, unjustified, and he did not hold on to that bitterness. He allowed forgiveness into his heart. And did he do that for his captors? Did he do that for the people that didn't treat him very well? No, he did not. He did that for himself, because what would have been the point of him coming out of prison, seeing those gates of freedom, yet in his mind, still staying in prison. And that's where we are in life. Often it's in our head and our minds, we end up staying in these dark, dark places. And, and it is a really hard concept to grasp, but we have the choice to not do that. It is so empowering. It is our choice. If you want to live in anger, bitterness, resentment confusion hate rage that's a choice but to me those words even when you say those words they don't bring good energy to my soul as i say them out loud if you want to live in peace grace ease flow beauty acceptance then that's a choice and it's as simple as that yeah, it is. And that, I think you've hit the nail on the head because there's a misconception about what forgiveness is. And the misconception is if I forgive my perpetrator, if I forgive the person that raped me, if I forgive my parent that abused me as a child, if I forgive my friend that went off with my other friend, then I'm letting them off the hook and I'm saying that what they did is okay. But actually, it's not doing that. It's actually letting yourself off the hook from carrying the bitterness and the rage and the anger and the hurt, as you say. And I looked up the... the interpretation of forgiveness what it means and it says it's actually a conscious decision so first of all we have to be making a conscious decision it's not something that happens overnight or just suddenly evolves we make a conscious decision to release the feelings of resentment or bitterness towards a person who has harmed us regardless of whether they deserve to be forgiven or not and I think that was quite crucial we make a conscious decision that no matter what's happened to us we release them from the power they have to alter our life and put our life into the negative space as opposed to the positive. And I had um, you know, a really interesting story. I used to work in prison and I used to teach restorative justice. And we had amazing people that used to come in and work with the girls in prison, teaching forgiveness and what it meant. And some of these girls had never, ever been forgiven in their life. They'd never walked through forgiveness from their parents. They'd never received forgiveness. So they didn't understand the concept of what it was. And least of all, they'd, ever, they'd never actually forgiven themselves for anything they'd ever done wrong. And we had this one story of a couple that had a 15-year-old son who was out at night. And he was beaten up by 14 young men in their 20s in the streets. And he was left for dead. And it was a horrific story. He was left for dead on the brow of a hill. And a car came over and the exhaust pipe of the car picked up the belt from his body and dragged him along the road. And the coroner said it was the car that killed him in the end. But he, if he hadn't been left for dead on the road, he wouldn't have been there. So their, their story of their suffering was the worst that any parent could ever go through. And they decided that when this case went to court and the boys appeared, the young men appeared in the High Court in London, 
that they would be present. They'd hear the story and they watched them, you know, come in and, every, and out every single day for a period of weeks. And they chose to forgive the boys and they chose to forgive the boys' parents that, they, that sat there as they listened to this horrendous evidence. And they started to go and visit these young men in prison and they started then to befriend these young men in prison and they started to work with forgiveness the power of forgiveness and so when they came into the prison I was working in to teach what it meant to forgive all the girls in front of me there was probably about 12 in the room that we were working with at the time you know the big huge girls pierced everywhere tattoos everywhere swearing and quite aggressive in in nature they all broke and they cried and they sobbed when they heard the story. And that was the beginning of them being able to understand what forgiveness was. They could see that this couple were not held trapped in anger and rage. They had such love in their hearts. And to witness that when they were all in prison themselves for murder, all these girls had committed murder, that started to transform their lives. The power in forgiveness was so huge. It didn't just affect the parents' life, but it then went on to affect those girls in prison that had also murdered. It's a huge, huge thing and how it, forgiveness is for the strong. So don't ever think for, by forgiving somebody that you are the weaker party. That is not the case whatsoever. It shows how strong you are when you can do that. I mean, the love in those people's hearts, that couple's heart who could go and do that. And then they turned their pain and suffering into something good for the world. They went out and passed on their message and they led by example and we're always talking about that we all need mentors we all need to be shown how to do something because we don't come into this life just knowing stuff okay we know the odd thing but mo everything we got within us we're learning all the time so if we if we can be role modeled this way of being it's a much nicer way i mean how many people do you know who have been wronged by somebody and they hold on to this bitterness and resentment and vengeance for so long and you can see it eats away at them they can't see it themselves because it's just their natural state of being and you know you can be sitting there talking to a friend maybe just chit chatting everything's okay and then maybe like their ex might phone up or something about the children and their whole demeanor changes they they get tense they get that look in their face they often look older and just they have like a bitter look on their face and it's it's actually quite sad to see and it's sad to feel i mean i've lived i've left a partner and at one point i hated him and that but at the time i think the hate was healthy it got me out of the relationship. I didn't like what was happening. I got to the point where I actually despised him. But the opposite of hate, the opposite of love, sorry, is not hate. The opposite of love is indifference. So I allowed myself to get to that part of indifference and forgive him for all the wrongs he did me. Because I couldn't walk, it, I would have been like Nelson Mandela. I would have walked away from, a, from an abusive relationship and then if I would have held on to the hate, who's that, who is that affecting? The only person that would have been affecting is me because he's over living in another house, doesn't know I'm hating him. It, it affected me and that's what, that's people carrying hate or resentment or this vengeance with them. It's only affecting you and your soul. It is, and I guess your decision to walk in forgiveness means you can leave the past behind. You can learn from the past. It doesn't mean that everything happened just stops because we learn from the past and we take the transition that we walk through with us. But it means you don't take the past into the future. You can have a clean slate in the future and be open to what the future is holding for you as that new person, but without that resentment and bitterness coming with you. But Joe, for listeners that are tuning in to the podcast or watching us on YouTube. What are those tools? What are the key strategies for people that haven't understood the process of forgiveness who suddenly listen to this and think, gosh, I actually thought forgiving was letting them off the hook, was saying it was okay, was, um, you know, it, it was, it, I didn't realize it was about me. I thought it was more about them. So I want to actually release myself from that cord that goes between the two of us that I've hung on to all this time. I want to set myself free, but I don't know how to do it. How do we do it? Okay, well, first of all, it's understanding that you are forgiving for you. It's for your own growth, your own happiness, and your own peace. And we often have to forgive without an apology or without an acceptance of guilt or wrongdoing. 
So that is often the case. And I think the first tool is accepting all of your feelings that you've had. Accept that you've had rage or bitterness or vengeance, so you might have wanted that person to explode in a ball of flames. Accept that to begin with, because that's all okay. You're human. Accept that. And then commit to letting it go. You, it has to be a conscious choice. Like you said before, the definition is like psychologists will generally define forgiveness as a conscious, deliberate decision to release feelings of resentment and vengeance towards another person or group. And do you have to wait until the other person has said sorry to do that? Never. Because as I just said, you might be waiting until hell freezes over before that happens. It may never happen. I mean, how many times have you fallen out with somebody and they have never admitted their guilt? And, but again, life's two sides to every story anyway. This is all about doing work on you for you. And so definitely not, no. So I there's think- levels of forgiveness, aren't there? Because if somebody comes to you to say, you know, I, I can understand, I really hurt you by saying this, would you forgive me? And then you can partner with it and say, yes, of course, I forgive you. Thank you for that. It did hurt me, but I'm prepared to let you go. And let's, let's be friends again. So that's one level of forgiveness, which is probably easier, isn't it? Because then you have an understanding that what they did was actually wrong because they've admitted it. That's an easier step. But what you're saying here is, regardless of the fact that they can come forward and ask for forgiveness or admit they've done something wrong, you do it anyway. You make that conscious decision. Because what you've just said then of course if somebody comes to you and if there's two per people coming together to have a conversation which is calm and in good spirits well then it, of course it feels better because both of you get to get um to talk about your feelings and how the situation made you feel and so if the other party is coming to apologize of course that's a win-win situation generally and yet that is definitely easier to forgive it doesn't take anywhere near as much courage. Well, actually, it depends on the situations. That's actually not true. But if the other person's there, of course, it's, it can often be easier. However, in a lot of situations, that's not the case. And, you know, we're talking about forgiveness for really big things sometimes as well. You know, you just talk about that couple and that hideous, hideous, hideous thing that they went through. Losing a child. I mean, it's bad enough losing a child in any set of circumstances. But to go through what they went through that's gut wrenching and heartbreaking so but they found it in them to do it if they can anybody can and take that glimmer of hope that's your seed they did it so you know you can so yeah accept the feelings and then commit to letting go and be empowered that it is a conscious decision by you for you Mm. and then think about the pros and cons think about what it is doing to you by holding on to all of that pain you know and do you want to feel like that ask yourself that question by holding on to this amount of resentment by holding on to this incident that's happened in my life is it giving me any good or is it diminishing the power that you have to walk out your life in abundance of what the universe has got for you and it's interesting isn't it because when we lack forgiveness when we won't partner with forgiveness what we're doing is looking at the past and we're saying it could have been this, it should have been this, it would have been this, but you have to let that go and say it wasn't and it didn't. And so now I've got this new opportunity to co-create with the universe with new people in my life and to move on with something better than what was because our mind would step into fear and say, well, that was something that should have been and therefore that's where I should be right now. But the universe might be saying to you, actually, I've got something way better for you. That was your learning. That was your teacher. And if you learn those lessons from that, I can take you here, which is much further than you would have been if you'd just gone on that journey and that path. So, and again, going back to the couple in prison, their whole life then became purposeful and they were fulfilled and they loved every minute of going into prisons and working with young adults who had a chance to turn their lives around through restorative justice. And they, they blossomed in their calling, which was to go into prisons and work with young men. And they, they found purpose again. And they said, actually, in the end, they'd had two sons. They had one living son still remaining. But they semi-adopted emotionally, psychologically, all these young men in prison who hadn't had good parenting, hadn't had good role models. And they all 
fell in love with this couple who became like grandparents to them and they had their mentors in prison so they felt a sense of purpose so not only can we forgive but we can take that to another level and we can actually find purpose through that forgiveness we can bring good somewhere else and that is if we want to realize that there's a higher purpose and a higher being outside of ourselves isn't there it's not just about us our needs our wants our ego our disease our desires it's something bigger than where we're at actually but if you want to do just think about yourself and your ego and all of that kind of stuff, I'll, if you are going to hate on somebody, you are giving them your power. So just remember that while you are in hatred and bitterness and vengeance, you are not keeping your power to yourself. You are handing it over to that other person. So even if you are in that state and you're feeling a little bit bold and you're thinking this forgiveness stuff isn't, isn't worth it, you just handed over your power. So think about that. Yeah. And as Oscar Wilde says, if you, if you don't want to forgive as well, remember that if you forgive your enemies, nothing annoys them more. I know. So there's actually other, other, other reasons to forgive if you actually can't think about our beautiful reasons. There you go. So, yeah. So what, what have we said? We've said accept your feelings, commit to doing it. No, feel empowered by that. It's your choice. Um, ask yourself what, the, what it is achieving by holding on to the pain how is it making you feel and then you've got to find some empathy somewhere as well I think you know you've got to empathize for people and yourself because sometimes this is not about just forgiving some other people this is a whole list about forgiving yourself as well for anything you know, we're very good at beating ourselves up for things we've done wrong so it goes it goes again with everything empathize for yourself have empathy for other people and um, and understand your responsibility in the situation yeah because yeah. we yeah. are we all have a responsibility somewhere even if we've been wronged accept that that was where you that was where it was um and focus on the present focus on what it is you want your life to look like do you want to live in all of those horrible words which makes your soul feel heavy or would you like to live a little bit lighter and as you say you know forgiveness doesn't mean you forget that's not what it means at all it doesn't mean you are okay with what's happened that you condone it that's not what it means at all it's just letting go of that for you um and allow peace to enter your life and feel compassion yeah absolutely and i think that's so powerful what you say i like to say the way you've um you've read the without saying number one two three four you haven't given the list like i do every day very clever <laughs> i love it but also do you know interestingly what when we don't forgive, what we often want from the person is love. That's the thing we're searching for from that person. We want them to understand how we feel. We want them to say that I really cared about you. I want them, we want them to say I didn't mean to hurt you. We actually seek, seeking love. So we're looking for love outwardly. If we turn that around to forgiving them and releasing them, we can then find that love inwardly. Mm. And we can say that... There is, they hurt me, that's their responsibility. My reaction is my responsibility. Therefore, we step into ownership about the part we have to play. You've just talked about the different parts that we have to play and the ownership we take. They've hurt me, that's theirs. They've got to deal with that. My responsibility is my reaction, my anger, my rage, my insecurity, my bitterness, my jealousy. So I'm going to work with that. I was looking for love from them and reaffirmment and security, but I'm actually going to find that inside me. I love myself. I can actually forgive myself for my reaction. I'm going to go on a new journey because of this situation. And I'm going to grow. And that's when we take back our power and we become an authority in who we are. And we learn to love ourselves again, isn't it? We find purpose. We find meaning. And interestingly, we find freedom and peace. Absolutely. And I mean, aren't they just beautiful words, freedom and peace? I'll just leave you with one last quote. It says, let no man pull you low enough to hate him. And that was by Martin Luther King Jr. Let no man pull you low enough to hate him. And wouldn't it be likely to know that when, when somebody does pull us low enough, we instantly start to say, I'm going to rise above this. I am going to rise above this and speak those positive words. You and I talk constantly about changing our thought patterns, changing our words. And that's such a lovely quote to leave us with say that say that one again before we go let no man pull you low enough to hate him because you are worth more than that and your life is worth more than that you are beautiful you are wonderful and forgiveness is all for you and your heart so from our hearts to your heart we're going to leave you with love light and peace